Good morning and welcome to today's episode of Transformed. Today I want to continue the Me 3 series, and today's subject is loving without hypocrisy. Welcome to today's message with Pastor Jim Balzano. As always, I want to thank Park Home for our studio furniture and thank Taylor Design and Events for designing our studio. The Apostle Paul said in Romans chapter 12, he said, love must be free of hypocrisy. Detest what is evil, cling to what is good, be devoted to one another in brotherly love, give preference to one another in honor, not lagging behind in diligent, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, persevering in tribulation, devoted to prayer, and contributing to the needs of the saints and practicing hospitality. You know, there's a phrase we've often heard throughout my life in ministry. It goes like this, God first, family second, and ministry third. I can't tell you how many times I've heard that statement over the years. I heard it in Bible school, I've heard it in ministers' meetings, and even read it in books. Of course, the premise is simple, and yet it's very correct. Yet, there are moments it's very challenging to live up. Each one makes a demand on the other. Putting God first may indeed cause our families to come second for a season. Prioritizing our families can in fact cause them to become a hurdle for ministry sometimes. And yes, there is a challenge for all of us in full-time vocational ministry to not elevate that ministry above God and family. This whole section that I've been talking about, this whole series, has been talking about putting God first and others second and myself in the third place. It's a phrase that most Christians would agree that is accurate when we do it that way. Jesus was the embodiment of such a lifestyle. But again, it's a simple statement, but much more challenging to live out. It's not so much living out the God first part, okay, but sometimes it's the putting others second part that becomes the challenge. Wouldn't we like it better if it said God first, me second, and others third? I think I'd like it better like that for a little bit. Matter of fact, there's times I actually promote that. However, that is not the example of Jesus, and it certainly should not be the behavior of us as believers. Again, Romans 12, Paul talks about how we are to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. This is the basis of God first. What you sacrifice, um, who you sacrifice, and what you sacrifice to has first place in your life. Then Paul, later in that chapter, deals with how we treat each other as believers and how we interact with one another. When you read what he wrote, you quickly come to an understanding that in our relationships with others, we are to take a lesser place than they. Now, he said to love others without hypocrisy. Hmm. I sometimes wonder if the church is one of the places where the word love is used in a flippant and disingenuous manner. Now, don't get upset with me. I know there are those who genuinely love, and I'm not talking about you or them, but I am talking about those in the church who will use the word in a manner that's not genuine. It often becomes the precursor to something negative about a person. How many times have you heard this statement? I love them, but. Usually, the but is followed with something negative, disparaging, or critical about the person that you supposedly love. Paul said to love without hypocrisy, meaning to do it in a genuine, sincere, and undisguised manner. There is a lot of love that sometimes floats around believers that is nothing more than a masquerade that is hiding the true motives and thoughts of our hearts. I've heard people use the word love, but under its mask was a heart that was bitter, resentful, unforgiving, and if I might say, even hateful. You see, if Paul told the Romans what it looks like to put others second in our lives, and one of the ways is to love without hypocrisy, well, what does it look like? Well, first of all, he went on to say, be devoted to one another. Love without hypocrisy is devoted to each other. When you told your spouse you were going to love him or her for the rest of his or her life, doesn't that imply you will also to be devoted to that spouse for the rest of his or her life? I think it should. Your love should be demonstrated through your devotion to each other. Paul said, believers are to be devoted to one another as brothers. Brothers, that's right, brothers. All who are believers in the cross of Jesus Christ had better remember one thing, that through his blood, we've been become part of one big happy family. 
You're my brother and you're my sister. Therefore, I am meant to be devoted to you and love you and to be mutually edifying and to do it without hypocrisy. Love without hypocrisy, as Paul continued, is to put one another above you in honor. I love this word, preference. It means to go before and show the way. I am to prefer you. I love people by honoring people. I don't wait for me, I'm sorry, I don't wait for them to love me or honor me. When I am preferring them, I'm setting the pace in the relationship by first honoring them. Some of you, you've been waiting for somebody to love you or honor you in order for you to give that love to them. That's not how it works in the scripture. Even as I write this, I, I wrote this, I felt the Lord telling me to write, some of you are waiting for others to give you what you believe is due honor. That might be true. However, it's time you lead and show the way by giving honor. When you love with honor, you will receive love with honor. You can't love and not honor people. Words really are cheap and they really are easy. It's so easy to tell someone you love them, but act it out is another step. True love, on the other hand, will have a price and will at times be difficult and cause us to have to sacrifice. Paul wrote the words, but who's our example? Oh, it's Jesus. The church should look and act like Jesus, obviously. He loved without hypocrisy. His love was genuine, sincere, and perfect. Coming to the earth to live a sinless life was loving us through a total devotion to us, his brothers. He preferred us over preferring himself. He indeed has gone before us and shown the way of what love without hypocrisy looks like. His life was one that put his father first, others second, and himself third. If we, his church, are going to look like him and act like him and speak like him, it will run with this calling to put God first and others second and put ourselves third through genuine love that is void of hypocrisy. That's what it looks like when we become a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. Go love somebody this week. Have a great week.